Hi there, my name is Jackie Decker, and I'm going to take you through part of our presentation from Patterns to Algebra. This section will focus on the input-output game and starting our learning with square tiles. And that means starting before we ever use a table of values or any other representation, starting with visual patterns using square tiles. Before we dig into the activities, I just wanted to highlight the skills and concepts that make up what we call algebraic reasoning. I'm going to ask you to pause the video and take a moment to read all of these to yourself. What we'll do is after each task, we'll come back to this to think about how each task connects to the skills and concepts of algebraic reasoning. All of the activities we're going to look at come from the book From Patterns to Algebra by Dr. Ruth Beatty and Dr. Kathy Bruce. The first one we're going to try is called the Input-Output Game or What's My Rule? When playing the Input-Output Game or What's My Rule with students, you're going to ask your students to give you an input, not in order though, and you're going to have in your mind the rule you're going to use to change the input from the output and students are trying to think of what that rule is. You're going to ask them to keep that thinking quiet for a little while. Once they think they know the rule, they're going to be testing their rule to see if it's true for the next input. So let's try it. When our input is 4, our output is 12. Think quietly to yourself. What do you think my rule is? When the input is 2, the output is 6. Is it, the, is it still the same rule? Does it still work? When the input is 7, the output is 21. Now you're probably predicting the output for each input. When the input is 3, the output is 9. So as you may have figured out, the change rule from input to output is to multiply by 3. The reason we put these inputs in a random order is because we want our students thinking across the table of values, not only down the table of values, thinking of what we have to add or do to each number. That when we go this way, we're thinking additively, but when we help students see across the table, we're helping them move to multiplicative thinking, which is going to lead into functional thinking later on. Purposeful practice of the input-output game can be played on mathies.ca by your students, where a robot is changing each input into an output. So now I'd like you to pause this video and stop and think about how the what's my rule task connects to all of these skills and concepts of, concepts of algebraic reasoning that we can see over here. You may have thought that students are offering and testing conjectures and generalizing patterns. They were thinking about unknown quantities and they were starting to think about using variables to efficiently and generally describe a relationship, but we'll get more into that later. The next task we're going to do is we're going to build some patterns from a pattern rule. And so I'm going to ask you to get out your square tiles. You only need one color for now, but you'll need two colors later. And you're going to need some position number labels, three sticky notes, one that says one, one that says two, and one that says three. And what I would like you to do is build position one, position two, and position three of this pattern rule, where the number of tiles at each position is equal to the position number multiplied by 5. So pause the video and build that pattern. Having a look at some student work, or in this case the work of teachers at a workshop, which is very similar to the student work we see, we see that the first group at position 1 have 5 tiles, so we can see that one group of 5. At position 2 they have 5, 10 tiles, so we can see two groups of 5 at position 2. And at position 3 we have three groups of 5, so they're really showing us that groups of model of multiplication. In the group over here, we can still see one group of five, one, two groups of five, one, two, three groups of five, but we can also see an array or an area model. We can see that at position one, we have an array or an area model that is one by five. At position two, it's two by five. Position three, it's three by five, and so on. Now I'd like you to pause your video and think about how building patterns from a pattern rule connects to these skills and concepts of algebraic reasoning. You may have noticed that noticing and modeling patterns and making connections among representations, we're starting that work here. We're also thinking about unknown quantities a little bit, and we might be offering and testing conjectures to generalize a pattern. We may not be there yet, but we are certainly working towards that. We're now going to return to what's my rule with input and output, but we're going to have a more complex change rule this time. So let's see what you can figure out. If the input is 4, our output is 22. If our input is 2, our output is 
12, input of 7, output 37, input of 3, output of 17. What do you think the change rule is? Multiplied by 5, add 2. So what I'd like you to do now is to build that pattern rule, but this time you're going to use two colors of square tiles, maybe blue and red, and you still need those position number labels, and I'd like you to build position one, position two, and position three, where the rule is the number of tiles at each position is equal to the position number multiplied by three plus two. Pause the video and give that a try. Looking at some student work, we noticed that after we consolidated the last pattern and talked about the array or area model of multiplication, all groups now used that. So we can see the constant now in red of two tiles at each position number, and then a different number of blue tiles at each position number, so three times the position number. We can see a three by one rectangle, three by two, and three by three. This group's also added the position zero where there are no blue tiles. The part of your pattern that is multiplied by is called the multiplier. The part of your pattern that did not change or was constant is called a constant. And so now I want you to use those two ideas and two colors of tiles to create your own secret pattern rule. You want to make your thinking as visible to others as you can. And then you want to ask a friend to see if they can guess your pattern rule. You can ask your friend to build a pattern and you can guess their pattern rule. You can also see if you can figure out the pattern rule for each of these patterns. Now I'd like you to pause the video and think about how guessing pattern rules connects to these skills and concepts of algebraic reasoning. You may have thought that the connections here are noticing and modeling patterns. We're starting to make some connections among representations, in particular between the tiles and the pattern rule. We're starting to use variables now to generally describe that pattern rule or relationship. We're thinking about offering and testing those conjectures and generalizing those patterns. Finally, we want to actually connect different representations. So take the pattern rule that you made and I want you to just make a graph with those. You may want to then take that graph and transfer it to grid paper. Uh, square tiles and the squares on chart paper are actually the same size, so that works really well. This is what some others did when they created a graph with their tiles. You can see that the group on the left have their constant on the top and their multiplier on the bottom. The group on the right have the constant on the bottom and the multiplier on the top. Once you have created your graph, it's really important that students see the connections between the graph and the equation. They may have used a table of values also to understand their pattern, and so we want to make connections between these. The real learning for students is when they can make connections between the different representations. So pause the video and see how you might use different colors to make connections between all of those representations. Here is what some others did. We can see every time we're talking about a constant, we see green. Every time we're talking about the multiplier, we see yellow. So pause the video and have a look at all of those connections. And we want to think about this one last time. How are the skills and concepts of algebraic reasoning coming out here while, they're, while we connect the representations? I notice that we are making connections among representations at the top, and we're really noticing and modeling those patterns and understanding them more deeply when we're able to do that. Thanks so much for listening.